Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Hani Rambod, and I'm here with my co-host right now, and we got Austin. We're back. Austin is in the house. Yeah. We're but here. Austin is not from Austin. No, that just was random. California. Yeah, he's Dallas. from Northern California, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> he's another transplant. <laughs> Somehow just got here a little bit sooner than you did. Yes, yeah. yes. And um, again, I'm trying to make this regular. Yeah. So again, thank you for coming on board and helping me with this because we are, again, if you haven't heard in the last podcast, we are in our temporary podcast space here in downtown Dallas. And we're talking today a little bit about the Pittsburgh Pro. It was a big weekend. Yes, it was a big weekend, especially when it comes to guest posers and what ended up happening, because obviously it got blown up with the fact that Derek did end up jumping up on stage. And we want to talk a little bit about how that progressed and how that happened and the fact that Big Rammy didn't make it. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of people asking me what happened because there's a lot of rumor out there that... Um, some he, things happened. Yeah, some things happened. Yeah. And I, you know, again, only he can speak about it so we can speculate all yeah. we want. But I think that there's some there's some information that's out there that we do need to discuss yeah. because he was on the poster. He was supposed to be there. And everyone that was in that auditorium, including the officials, the, you know, the, um, the sponsors, the promoters, everybody, Jim Manny and everybody, everybody thought he was going to be there. Yeah. So he didn't show up. Uh, we don't know why. I don't know the official reason why, mm -hmm. but, uh, I do think we made the best we could out of it with the guys that were there, Nick Walker, uh, Hunter Labrada, uh, Brandon Curry, uh, the fifteenth Mr. Olympia. He, and, he likes to wear that hat. <laughs> and Derek. And because and, Derek Derek wasn't on the poster. Derek was, was never Derek, supposed to he was yeah, not. he wasn't supposed to guest yeah. post. So we had Derek there because we had an Evigen booth because we were sponsor of the show mm -hmm. and we had an Evigen booth. I knew that there was a possibility that there might be something that we might need to do or right. jump on because of the fact that he is the current reigning two twelve Mr. Olympia yeah. champion. And that was something that we might do, but it wasn't it for certain. Okay. And then when Rami didn't show up, then it was kind of more of a, hey, look, you know, we could definitely use another body up there. Yeah. And uh, would he, you know, does he look good enough? Does he feel good enough? Did he look good enough? That's, <laughs> well, no, that's, that's what a, that was the question. Yeah, right? I'm like, come on. <laughs> seeing those photos. That, I remember, I remember seeing those photos whenever they came out online. It was one of those, like, iconic bodybuilding moments where you just see somebody and you're just like, whoa you just have to stop for a second and it's just one of those photos there's a specific one that you posted uh that was just like a mind-blowing image that kind of sticks with you for quite a while just seeing somebody look that huge and just his leg separation everything was just insane so even with all of that he wasn't supposed to be on stage which is crazy yeah he wasn't supposed to be on stage yeah. and he didn't get ready for this this was something that he was just training wow and obviously he's growing yeah right he's growing and we have had to keep his calories low yeah. Believe it or not, he was, was doing 150 grams of carbs. Wow, yeah, and there was really? no carb up for this at all or anything no like way. that. No, he's, he was doing 150 grams of carbs the last three days, four days. And again, I did that just in case he was going to jump on stage because yeah. I didn't want him to be too waterlogged yeah. because he was in full blown off season. And also because of the fact that we've got to watch the weight, the weight is really what was going to be happening. There was yeah. going to be like a problem. This yeah. is going to be a problem. This is a hundred percent a problem. Now well, that's the question everybody's asking is right. I'm seeing everywhere is like, how is he going to make it to two twelve? It, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's, it's super difficult because yeah. now, I mean, he was already flat last year yeah. and now he's put on a lot of good muscle and he's keeping the calories and the food really low. And everyone's like, oh, man, he must be blowing up because he wants to do the open. And he's, you know, Hani has him doing the open. Absolutely not. This is not something that we are planning to do yeah. whatsoever. So it was not something that this was like a prelude or this is a sneak peek of him doing open. Yeah. Not at all. This was literally trying to be the best version of him so that he can be in striking distance of doing the 212 to yeah. hold on to his crown. Yeah. And that's what this is about. Now it's turning into other things because everyone's like, hey, is he doing it? Is he not doing it? He should do it. He looks great. He's going to deflate. All of those things are now in play. Yeah. They are in play. And we have to turn around and look at a lot of different variables. And it isn't as quite and dry as everyone thinks it is, one way or the other, because he does look really good right now. Yeah. And his weight is very heavy. I don't want to give you exact numbers, uh, but I was going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know, it's one of those things. 
that I kind of wanted to, and the reason, and guys, the reason why I didn't want to give the exact numbers is because I want to give him the opportunity to tell the story a little yeah. bit, but it's one of those things where I really feel that now more than ever, it is becoming very difficult for him to make weight. Yeah. It really, yeah. really is because he's in such good shape. Now, if he was sloppy, it's one thing. If he was a waterlog, he'd be one thing, but he's not. And now we're like, okay, what are we doing here? Because I'm going to have to start his diet here next yeah. week, yeah. seven months out to start bringing him down for the 212, or we're going to have to reassess things. So there's two buckets of thought that we have to sit down and really break down. And anybody who's known me, anybody who's worked with me in the past knows I don't just jump to decisions, just like right now. Yeah. I am absolutely on the fence about this because there's two ways to look at it. Number one, he's regained, you know, wants to go back and take his title back for one more time. Yeah. And then he could turn around and decide if he wants to go open. But the other way is he looks so good, it's going to be like how much deflation is going to go on yeah, between yeah. now and then, and how is he going to look compared to the last year when he was still not really pushing hard then. So there's a lot of different things going back and forth. So we're going to sit down and we're going to have to really um, dissect it, and we're going to have to analyze all the different options. Because there's just so many different factors in play. And there I is. Think that, that, like, looking at this, it was not just the fact that he looked ridiculous for him. You know, if those photos were just him by himself, it would have been insane. Yeah. Same, similarly. But it was the fact that he was up there with a bunch of open guys. And, like, people were actually being able to look. Well, you had one prior Mr. Olympia. Yeah, yeah. And then you had two guys that were in the top five. Yep. yep right? Yep. And then I don't, I don't think he would look bad near, you know, next to Big Rammy either. No. I think that he would give Big Rammy a run. Because of how complete he is. And at the end of the day, I think that the biggest thing is when you look at everybody, everyone's improving, which is great, but so is he. Yeah. And so I think that we have to look at everything and put it in perspective. So let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about the guest posing in general. Yeah. Um, and let's, let's go take it a little bit further back and let's just talk about the show. I think the show was amazing. I think that uh, I would have loved to see Seabum. Guess pose. Hop up there. Yeah, yeah, just because he was there yeah. and all this, and as a little selfish as a as a bodybuilding fan that I still am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, believe it or not, he's pretty mysterious. <laughs> he is. He's one of those people that like take photos and then he'll like trickle them out closer to the show, but they'll be already from like eight weeks ago or something like that. Like he he's very selective with what he shows online. He does. Yeah, and he is selective. And I think that he was never. And this is something that some people were asking me. They're like, "Well, he was supposed to guest post." No, he never agreed to guest post. This was always supposed to be a special appearance. Yeah. So he was going to be there, shake hands, kiss babies, get up on stage. He did a great little talk about basically how he felt about the show and kind of what was going on with the actual um, Pittsburgh show. At the same time, he was just. Um, I think he's getting better and better at being able to uh, convey his messaging yeah. because I think he's got so much in his head that he wants to get out that it's just a matter of compartmentalizing it and yeah. saying, okay, here, let's, let's talk about this. And when I did the interview with him at the Arnold, it was really cool because we were able to really connect. And that's the first time I ever really sat down and talked to him, believe it or not. Oh wow! And we, you know, in passing, hi, how are you? Yeah. That's it. Good luck. Great job. Yeah. You looked amazing. It's show, whatever, just, just little major, you know, minor, you know, uh, nuances when it comes to the communication of bodybuilders backstage, you know? Yeah. And so when we sat down and did that, and we, you know, I sat down with uh, Chris Bumstead and we started talking about life and how he motivates and all the trials and tribulations that he goes through. We were able to do that at a very high level in front of a crowd. Yeah. And a lot of people in the past have told me, hey, he's not really it's easy to work with in terms of like being able to get things out of him. Yeah. And I didn't feel that at all. But again, I'm as a coach, as a business owner, as being in this industry for 30 plus years, being able to pull that out of someone yeah. might be a little bit different for me yeah. because I can turn around and look at different angles to be able to do that. And like I said, I think there's a lot of really cool aspects of his thought process that has yet to actually be put out there. Yes. And it's going to be really cool to see him as he starts to evolve even more in terms of the connection and the connectivity with his fans and just the fans in general of bodybuilding. And I think that it's also a big reason why classic physique is really blowing up is because you have a person whose physique is very admirable and you look at it and you go, you admire it and you go, wow, this is a great physique, but also the mysteriousness of him yes. and bringing that right. forward is what makes him special. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people are very drawn to him. Yeah. And Cause he's still, he's still evolving every single year and you're kind of seeing somebody take on this massive weight of being 
the you know the main focus of this very very fast growing division and uh, you people everybody can watch that interview as you know a few a few videos ago on the on the channel here um and you could see that happening within that is like the initial the beginning you know you're kind of getting a read on him because it's mm -hmm. your first kind of conversation and then all of a sudden towards the end he just kind of starts to open up a lot more it was cool to be able to see like one of your main first conversations with him be on stage and on video uh so that was a really really great one if y'all haven't seen it yet just a couple you know a couple episodes ago but uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely we're seeing him kind of evolve through the years, not just physique wise, but kind of taking on this role as a major, you know, ambassador, ambassador of the brand. Yeah, Absolutely. Of the ambassador sport. of the sport of bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. Because again, all these different winners yeah. bring different key nuances yeah. to the fact that, hey, how, how do I represent myself as a champion? And, um, and you don't have to be a champion to represent bodybuilding, but obviously you have a very big stage that they put you on yeah. and you are, you put yourself on that pedestal. People go, Oh, they put somebody on a pedestal. No, what happens is you put yourself on that pedestal. You put yourself on that first place pedestal and whether it's first place or even like a Nick Walker, who's a top five, um, competitor now in the open class. Yeah. And he's building a lot of momentum being young and being able to move up the ranks. These types of athletes are going to be watched. and then the public are going to judge them. Yeah. Do I like this person's personality? Do I not like them? Do they, are they, there's a, there's a big difference between being arrogant and being confident. Definitely. And I feel like some people are drawn to certain people because they don't feel like that person's being arrogant. They're just being confident. And I feel that there's a very big, you know, different style versus Nick Walker versus a Chris Bumstead. And I think that I'm just using two different people because Big Ramy is not a person that's really, you know, comes stay side. He's not very um, yeah. out there. Yeah. He's not speaking a lot. And it would be no different than if Hadi won the Olympia, right? I mean, again, he speaks Farsi. He speaks very, very broken English, some words here and there. And he's deaf, right? I mean, he's hard of hearing, a hearing impairment. Um, so a lot of those things would hold him back as well. So I'm not saying, hey, look, it's just this person like Big Ramy. It could be, it could be several different types of winners that are up there, even if it was William Bonac, right? William Bonac isn't, is even though he speaks English and all of those things, there are going to be some people who are a little more eloquent than others, but just because you're eloquent doesn't mean that the messaging that you're giving to people actually connect with people. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's so, not just the way you say it. It's, it's what you're saying. That's very right. Much so. Yeah. And so what happens yeah. is you're going to turn around and be able to connect with a certain audience. And he's obviously taking it and, and really running with it yeah. when I'm, you know, Chris, as well as Nick Walker. And I think now you have other athletes like Derek, yeah. who is now being watched. He's being listened to, and he's also giving and conveying his message. Yeah. He's a very spiritual person, a uh, person. He's very, uh, very big on Christianity and his, his faith and being able to, to discuss it. He's very comfortable doing that, but also he doesn't, I don't think he does it in a very alienating way. No, no. And, but I do think that, you know, he's giving his messaging out there. And it, what's great is, you know, you have your own platform on your social network that you can turn around and be able to discuss things that interest you, that you feel are very, very important to you. Yeah. So I think that everybody is very different, but the cool thing about Chris was the fact that he didn't have to guest pose, even though everybody would love to him for him to guest oh, pose, sure, you know, sure. especially because everybody wants to see him yep. next to some of the other division guys, whether it's a 212 champion or whether it's the Olympia open guys to see what he will look like in the yeah. off season. Cause he gets, he gets up there weight wise. He does. People don't think about that cause it's classic, but then you hear some of his, you know, whatever he kind of trickles out those check-in weights. It's like, Whoa, just cause you know, he's taller, you know, there's a lot more mass to pack on there, but yeah, that, he gets heavy. Yeah. He stays and pretty tight too. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I'd love to see him exactly. guest pose. So, exactly. Chris, if you're listening to this, man, you're going to have to guest pose once. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, like, one interesting note that I was, uh, you know, kind of keeping an eye on is everybody talks about, you know, the the mutant, like, mass monster, mm -hmm. Nick Walker, and everybody's like, Derek doesn't look small next to him. Right. And that's, like, I think that's one of the things everybody was really surprised by, was like, oh, my gosh, like, he doesn't look small. And I think, I don't know, people kind of expect that, again, similarly to the classic, being in 212, they're not expecting somebody to be able to hold their own and look equally like almost equally as big right well yeah. unlike you know some other other sports or i should say more like mma where somebody comes in and weighs in yeah they're not that weight oh no not <laughs> you know? at all. Yeah, yeah so you're literally yeah. trying to make weight yeah. now a guy like sean clarita is different because sean clarita is only 175 pounds yeah you know he may weigh in at 190 but that's with his clothes on his shoes on he's got a hat he's got a heavy sweatshirt you know he's no more than 180 maybe on stage yeah and, um, but a guy like Derek Lunsford, who's 211 and three quarters, 211 and a half, where he barely weighed in. And I only gave him about 
a quarter to a half a pound just in case that act, that scale is a little bit off. I didn't want to have to go run him or end up doing something where yeah. I'm going to be like, hey, go hit in the sauna or do yeah. anything where I'm going to have to lose an extra pound or two. So I just went under. So if you look at the official weigh-ins, he was 211 and a half. That is insane. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and that was just like, hey, don't eat anything. Let's just make sure to give ourselves a quarter to a half a pound just yeah. in case that scale's a bit different than what we were tracking with. So I didn't want any surprises. And that's what he weighed in at, at the Olympia last year. And that is before everybody saw the photos and the improvements that have been made this year. So, right. Yeah. Right. So as much as the improvements that he's made, yeah. there's some things that you have to take in consideration. And everybody who's watching these, these videos of him guest posing or even the pictures of him, we do have to lose some muscle to make that weight already. Mm. Plus you got to add muscle. Because as you're training, you're going to add muscle. Now, are we trying to go out and then? No, we're not trying to add a ton of muscle because it's not something that we're like, hey, let's yeah. go ahead and just get, blow him up and blow him out. Yeah. And that's why he's dry because we're trying to keep his weight down. <laughs> we're trying to do things where we're doing, where he's in striking distance. Yeah. So that's what's going on. But let's go back and talk a little bit about, yep. because we're going off track, about the guys, the other guys. Yep. Hunter Labrada was in great shape. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think Hunter Labrada's improving. He's trying to build up his back. He's getting that going. I think that, um, again, it looks to me like he might even be getting ready for a show. I don't know if he is or not. If anybody knows in the comments below, let us know if there is some information out there that says that he might be doing a show. I haven't spoken to him much more than a few minutes here and there. Um, I did tell him he was going to be coming up to Dallas. So I said, Hey, the next time you come up here, let's get go. a workout together. Yeah. You know, he you always, know. he always keeps it really, really, really tight in the off season. That's kind of one of the things I've noticed. He's one of those competitors that just always is posting check-ins no matter what off season prep, what he just puts it all out there. He's very, he'll post his meals out there fully, everything. He's very much on the opposite end transparent. He just puts a lot of stuff out there. And it's, it's a kind of, again, like you said, everybody approaches it differently. It's right. really cool to see how he kind of does it that way. Uh, but he, I, you just never really see him get super off season, you know, like, you know, everybody's a little bit different with it, but yeah, he's always been more on that, that kind of leaner side in the off season. Well, and that's why, and same thing with Nick Walker, yeah. he wasn't way out of shape. He wasn't completely no, no. blown out or anything like that. I think they both came in really good shape for an off season Definitely. guest posing. That's, you know, again, unless, uh, Hunter is doing a show that we don't know about. I think that they're doing a really good job keeping their weight down in regards to excess body fat, excess yeah. water weight. They're in pretty good shape for an off season guest posing in the middle of May. Now on top of that, then we add in 15, you know, the 15th Mr. Olympia, yep. which is Brandon Curry, uh, the 2019 champion who took second last year. And again, was he at his best? No, but we also know that he's taking some a break right now. Yep. So he gets a pass because he needs a break. You can't keep pushing your body. He just won the Arnold Classic several months ago. Yeah, not all those guys were at the Arnold. You know, he's definitely coming off of that. So, you know, it's definitely a little bit different for him up there. Right, because yeah. he, obviously Hunter didn't do the Arnold. Yep. Neither did Nick. Yep. Uh, even though he wanted to, sounds like, because he did tell me that when we were at the Arnold that he was really wanting to do it. And there were some things that happened. But at the end of the day, he didn't do it. So he was able to give his body some rest. And then now he's, you know, really trying to build up in the off season. But if you look at even Brandon and he didn't look bad, he just obviously wasn't up to par yeah. because of the fact that where he's at in his program. Yeah. So again, you know, he, he, it's not like, Oh, Brandon looks small or watery or this or that. No, that's the way Brandon's supposed to look right now. Yeah. yeah. Could he always have a little bit bigger legs? Could he always have a little bit better of this? Yeah. But you gotta remember, he just came off of a show. Yeah. So there you go. Now, if you turn around and let's talk about Nick Walker, Nick Walker also did a training uh, session or two with Derek because they don't live very far from one another anymore because now Nick Walker has moved over to Tampa and now they're in close proximity of each other. So that's why you're seeing some of that going on as well. So that's going to create a little bit of yeah. a rivalry and push a little push pull in there with them too. So that's kind of cool to see too, because yeah. I think that it's going to both make their game elevate with being able to push one another because they're going to see each other at the gym. They're yeah. going to get some workouts together. And now the 212 guy in a lot of ways is hanging with the open guy. Yep. And so both physically as well as probably strength wise, because Derek's not a weak individual. Oh, no. He can throw some weights oh, around. Yeah. And so, you know, and all in all, I mean, he's, he's not that much shorter than the Nick. Um, so it's, they're, they're a couple inches apart in regards to height. So 
it's always cool seeing those little kind of link ups happen, whether it's just geographically people end up in the same cities and they start training together or whether it's rivalries or because, you know, there's there's been that between between Nick and Hunter. You know, mm-hmm. there was quite a bit of that over the last year, kind of that rivalry going back and forth on uh, social media and whatnot. So it is kind of cool. Like, it would be interesting to see, you know, like mm-hmm. how that dynamic might change in the future between Derek and uh, and Nick and whatever that might be, depending on the divisions. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's definitely it's always cool to see the crossover with guys training together, different styles and everything. Um, but yeah, that, that guest posing was definitely one to remember. That was a very, very big one. But I think when people start judging that, you can only speculate too much, you know, so much. Because it's like, it doesn't matter necessarily what they look like that day. You can kind of get a rough idea. It matters what they look like on the day. Right. You know? It's a big difference. Yeah. But I think that the biggest thing was the first person that came out, I was standing on the side with Jay Cutler. And Jay and I, you know, obviously we go way back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and uh, it, we went out to, to dinner and we hung out and everything else. I think that was the night before we went out. And if you guys were watching my social media and my Instagram on my stories, it was you two are like, both doing the Masters Olympia. Right? Yes, That's what yes, I heard. yes. We you are heard both it here. doing the That's Masters what he told Olympia me right before we sat down on the podcast. So it's it's fact. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. I do anything that has Olympia related, it's the uh, expo. <laughs> yeah, it's the expo. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I joke with Jay and it busts yeah. his balls all the time, and I just tell him, "Hey, man, come on, one more, bro, one just more." Because I used there, to yell yeah. at him so much in the videos and go, "One more, one more," <laughs> and uh, to this day, people would like see me and be like honey one more they're screaming out the window the cars one more one more <laughs> and you know i call them a sandbagging mf or and uh it you know in in the fst7 video but it was really cool because we got to hang out all weekend and then we also went to the gym yeah. and earlier in the day before uh, derek guest posed we were in the gym i was training derek and then he was training next to us and we were both training arms and he was training that uh, derek was training and I think, you know, he came over and he looked at me and he just kind of shook his head like, wow, he looks good, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see how he looks when he gets up on stage and we'll yeah. put like a coat of color on him. Yeah. And so when he got up back up there, you know, and he stepped on stage, music was on and he comes out and his quads are just kind of, you know, just, just flaring. And I look over at Jay and then I, he's looking and then he's just kind of looking to see all of the different angles to see, you know, that's what he does. That's what we do. Yep. We, we pick things apart. You don't just say, okay, he looks amazing because he looks great from the f- one shot, but he goes right into a front double bicep and it was like a cartoon character. He looked like literally He-Man from the action figures just back in the day. didn't look real. No, yeah. no. Yeah. And I mean, to this day, people thought that it was Photoshopped, the photo I posted, because the fact of the matter was that there was so much pop, right? And so much separation at a high weight. And then at the end of the, you know, then he turns into the side, then he goes into the back poses and he's hitting his poses and he was so pumped up that he literally couldn't even do a lat spread because he was so pumped up. He couldn't <laughs> put his hands back to do it. Cause I told him, I go, what was up with that lat spread? He's like, bro, my chest was so pumped up backstage that he turned around and he just like, was like, I, I can't even get my hands back. Yeah. There. But, but Derek's Derek could just stand there and he's doing a lat spread. If he, <laughs> well, no, but it's just funny. Cause I was like, you know yeah. me, I'm always a perfectionist. So yeah. I'm just like, why is your lat spread? You didn't pull it out. Yeah. Cause you were pulling it out several hours ago when we were at, you know, the gym and I seen, I was seeing him pose. But uh, but all in all, he did a great job. And then obviously, then the other Olympia competitors came out and they started posing. And then they started posing. Then they brought them all out and they started posing together. Yeah. And you can see the improvement Nick Walker's made. You saw the improvements uh, Hunter Labrad. I keep wanting to calling him Lee. Um, I was <laughs> I was big, always a big fan of his dad. And so, um, which Hunter, by the way, your dad needs to come up to Dallas. Um, they're out in Houston, and yeah. when he comes up, Not he's going to bring his dad. And, and then even with Brandon, when he came out, again, he's no slouch coming off of the, uh, the Arnold a couple months ago, they were all posing. And then all of a sudden you start seeing them posing next to each other. And that's when you can start seeing, well, yeah. wait a minute, this guy who's supposed to be a lot smaller than everybody else looks just as big yeah. because again, bodybuilding is an illusion, right? And he does weigh a lot. <laughs> Everyone asks, <laughs> what does he weigh? A lot. He does. And even though he's been trying to keep his weight down, he really has. He's been doing cardio in the off season and he's been watching his food intake, especially his carbs, because once his carbs go up, then he really blows up. And so we've been trying to keep him tight that way. And then also it keeps his appetite under control because of his, if he does higher carbs, he just wants to eat. He becomes an eating machine. So there's a lot of things that we have to do to try to work around the fact that his body does want to get bigger. So that's why it's inevitable that he's going to be open. It's just a matter of when, yeah. and we have to sit down and start, you know, figuring that out and having those conversations now, especially after we saw him guest pose. But, uh, but yeah, so I looked over at Jay and I said, Jay, what do you think? And he's like, ridiculous. 
you know, and he's like ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, you know, he looks good. Right. And he's like, no, he looks amazing. And I was like, well, that looked great. I saw it, you know, the judges were off the feedback They're they're hitting me up and they're like, wow. And then all of a sudden my phone started blowing up because I guess some of the pictures all started to hit the internet yeah. and everything else. And obviously everyone knows the photo I posted. So I think, yeah, it's right now. Um, it's, it's a tough, uh, it's not clear cut. It's still a tough decision as much as everybody wants me to sit there and just say, Hey, that's what everybody wants going, yeah. go one way or the other. Yep. It's definitely something that we are sitting down and having to consider because there's ramifications way beyond just him competing yeah. that people don't realize. And I try to really strategize everything I do, um, on and off the stage with my, with my athletes. I think everybody just has seen what he can do, uh, and what you can do with him and that. And I just think everybody wants to see just the, the, the ceiling be lifted off and just kind of see like where he can go with all of that. Uh, but there's definitely, you know, leaving a little mystery out there. We'll just yeah. see what happens with it. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and stay tuned and let me know guys, honestly, let me know what you think. Cause there's some people that think that he should still stay two twelve for one more year. And, um, and again, like I, I, I have an idea of what we're going to end up doing, but at the same time, it's not set in stone, yeah. but I know a lot of people in comments that I've seen in my pictures or whatnot, where they put comments. So, Comment below. Let me know what you guys think where Derek Lunsford should you know, show up. Should he do 212, go back and do it one more time and keep his title? Or should he go into the open? Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. And if you're listening to this and you're on the Spotify or whatever you download to listen to podcasts, then make sure you go over to YouTube too and throw in your comments because I am going to be on there and conversing with people regarding this exact weekend. So... You know, I mean, besides that, uh, Jim Mannion, kudos to him and the whole Mannion family that put on a great job with the show. Um, they really take care of their athletes too. I mean, like afterwards at dinner is just amazing that they take care of them with, uh, Jim took us to Capitol grill. I mean, it, it, yeah, <laughs> Dude, nice. I mean, he's like <laughs> top notch, you know, <laughs> I mean, and, uh, don't try to crash it. It's invite only it's uh, but it, but he does, he takes care of all the athletes and, um, the sponsors, the top, you know, the people that are really like, you know, the top people that are really involved with the, you know, the judges and, uh, the family, seeing the family members and doing all that. It's just great to being able to uh, to do that again because I did get to miss that the last couple of years. Yeah. I only, I only heard great things and that goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and going back to the whole Rammy thing, yeah, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there. Um, and, and I, there was a rumor that he got arrested. Okay. Again, rumor, he didn't get arrested. If he would have got arrested guys, he, it would have been all Everywhere. over the paper. Yes. Yeah. He, yeah. It's, it's, that's not the case. You know, now could there have been some issues regarding a passport or this or that? Who knows? Only he knows. Hopefully he'll turn around and tell us because again, Everybody that day, there was a lot of people that came and they were asking me, when is he showing up? When is he showing up? Because he, unfortunately, they missed him at the Arnold. And at the Arnold, he wasn't there. And then so the Arnold were in Ohio isn't far from Pittsburgh. So a lot of those people that wanted to see him there came over yep, to Pittsburgh. Yep. So again, rightfully so, they're frustrated, yeah. right? It's not just somebody that just when they're not there, it just goes under the radar. This is obviously, you know, a lot of people were there also for him. So that's a very prominent name to have not show up. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of the day, only he knows. And I'm sure yeah. that, you know, hopefully we'll all hear about what happened from him. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where, especially because he's two time Olympia champion now, people do want to connect. So they want to be able to see him. They want to be able to shake his hand, take a picture with him, do all those things. I mean, you know how many people come over and just do a selfie with me? Imagine how they do it with Bumstead or even with um, Derek or Nick or Brandon or just, you know, Hunter, any of those guys. And yeah. the good thing about these guys, they're all so friendly. Nobody yeah. really oh, has yeah. an attitude. Knock on wood. I don't want to anybody to change because you guys, honestly, there's, there's been people in the past that have really had bad attitudes. You know, I mean, Lou Ferrigno was known for like, if you want to take a picture with him, he would charge you 10 or 20 bucks. Oh. It was something weird like that. And I'm just like, why would you do that? This kid just wants to come over and take a picture. But again, I know it's a business decision, but I just felt like it was just one of those things that we're just all blessed for the people that want to come over and take photos with us. Yeah. And so I go out of my way to, hey, look, man, let me stop for a second, you know, to be able to spend time to take that picture with somebody. But um, but again, I know Lou, it was a business decision for yeah. him. And I know that there were some other people that would do it as well. But I would also I grew up in an era where we used to sell pictures. Right. Um, when I say we, meaning uh, Phil was probably one of the last bodybuilders along with Jay. And then before that, Ronnie, they would do tens of thousands of dollars a weekend in picture sales because what they would do is you would take a picture with them that's free and then if you wanted to take a pic uh, purchase a picture 
uh, it was about 10 bucks and you would get an eight by 10 and then you just tell them, Hey, could you make it out to Mike or could you make it out to yeah, my gym? Yeah. And they would turn around and grab the Sharpie and they would do that. And then they would sell merch and videos and all of those things. But at the same time now, I think that people are monetizing differently. Well, yeah, there's just a different trade off. It's like every single one of you, those photos you now take is getting posted, That's right. you know, with it. So like, you're just spreading that entire kind of, you're getting the publicity from that. And there's just kind of those eyes are worth a good chunk more now. Uh, so yeah, things are definitely changing quite a bit. And that, yeah, that whole kind of the new young era of, of guys that are kind of coming up, they're all so nice. Like, especially, you know, like, you know, Bumstead and, and Derek is just one of the most genuine guys. He's just so just chill to hang out with and be around. Just very, very laid back and very, very cool with all of his fans and everything. So it, it's, it's cool to see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, Labrada Walker, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Brandon's always been a gentleman, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and it's funny because him and I got, you know, go way back. I, I helped to you know, turn him pro, believe it or not. So back in the day, and I always said he was going to be Mr. Olympia someday. And I think that uh, one of these days we definitely got to get him on the podcast. We got to bring him on the podcast. So we can talk some about some good stories because I took Phil Heath to his room and then Phil's like, yeah, man, he's good. I go, how good? He was really good. <laughs> that was <laughs> when he turned pro. And uh, I believe it was the USA. God, man, I'm just, that was like, 10, 13 years ago. And it was uh, one of those things where even Brandon, he's just kind of a quieter guy, yeah. but he's a, you know, he's a family man. He's a very respectful guy. He just, you know, every time I see him, I just, you know, it was like being able to say, you know, I felt like, you know, I didn't miss a step getting to uh, hang out with Brandon and um, all of them are, have been really, really nice and yeah. very, very friendly and, and all that. I think that you have more beef and men's physique guys, <laughs> you know, uh, yes, there's more definitely. beef and more in men's physique guys that want to beat each other up, definitely. talk shit, do whatever than you do when it comes to men's open guys. And there's a way to do it. There's a way like Bumstead puts some beef out there, you know, he'll throw some comments out there, but it's in a certain way that adds to the sport. You talking about him and Brian? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah you're right. There, but you're it, right. but it's, in a, it's in a way. It's a respectable that, way. It's, exactly. It's right. like, it's Respectful. competition and you know, and it's, there's certain lines that aren't crossed and certain things that are just kind of like, when you do that, it's, I think people automatically it's bringing in more eyes from the public that kind of view bodybuilding initially as just kind of, you know, mean meatheads and everything like that. But when you show it, it's like, yeah, there's some competition, but everybody for the most part is pretty, pretty respectful and kind to the people around them. It goes a long way. It helps grow the sport quite a bit. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly why, speaking of growing the sport quite a bit, it's really why we want to do what's, what's best for the sport too. Yeah. I know with the whole Derek situation, open needs a, a, a little bit more, rivalry yeah they need a little bit more going on i think there's a lot of people that feel like that it's kind of slipped up a little bit and i and that's another reason why if he did go open that would also help a little bit with that situation but again every, we have to take everything in consideration and um and i feel the good thing is we're in a good spot he's in a good spot he's been in an, a spot where he's very healthy knock on wood he's really not pushing his body hard he's training hard but when it comes to the food or the sups or any of that stuff, he's not going crazy as much as people, some people might want to think, Hey, what's going on with this? And I think most people who know the industry or know bodybuilding or who are trainers or competitors, they can see him and he's got a very healthy look. Yeah, he does. And at the end of the day, there is levels to this. There just is. Yeah. And I feel that now we have to turn around and just try to pragmatically break up things and then plan them out. So again, I want to do a quick recap because everybody, which, you know, turned into a little bit longer than I expected <laughs> recap, but again, everybody did a great job. It was great. And then also all the competitors that competed and yes. they, they look great. Um, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, Dr. Sonny Andrews is uh, an Evagen athlete. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she won. Um, you have the most stacked bikini lineup. I think, you know, and guys and ladies, if you're listening to this podcast and you want to hear about the other division, Put it in the comments. I'll do my best I can to accommodate so that we can, if we want to turn around and break down physiques or whether you want us to discuss placings, but the, the bikini competitors yeah. were just such a crazy quality because you had Janet who just came back and she, the last show she did, she won the Olympia. So, and she placed third. And again, that top three, top five was just amazing quality. The quality was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And Laura Lee, Ended up winning that show. She looked great. Um, you have Ashley who took second, and then you had Janet who plays in third. But again, the whole top five, top six was absolutely top notch. I mean, it was the 
it felt like I was at the Arnold. Yeah, what a stacked show. Yeah, I mean, it was almost like a mini Olympia almost yeah. because I even seen Arnold's that weren't as stacked as that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'll be 100% honest with you. It felt like I was at a big show. Yeah. So whether you want to call it the Olympia or the Arnold, it was that that was the kind of quality. And you know who did that? You know who has, who has, t- has to take credit for that one? Who? J.M. Mannion. Because J.M. Mannion is an amazing recruiter when yep. it comes to talking people into doing yep. his show, uh, doing his dad's show. And it's one of those things where JM, JM put that together. So for all of you that went to the show and you enjoyed it or got to watch it, it's because he's an amazing recruiter. He knows how to talk these people into doing that show. And it's one of those things where I was like, whoa, it obviously worked. Yeah. Cause everybody's talking yeah. about it. Yep. 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 So again, guys put in the comments below, let us know what you want on the podcast. Do not forget, to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I have a lot of subscribers, but so many of you don't turn on your notifications. Put on your notifications because we're going to be doing this on a regular basis, and we want to make sure that you know whenever we have a new episode uploaded. So again, thank you, and that's the truth.